Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to the next episode of the serialization series. So last time we took a look at how we could uh, basically begin writing this uh, writer class, right, which would handle all of our actual kind of writing to um, a destination, writing bytes to a destination. And it also had some loose uh, information about our general file format and whatnot. And today we're going to kind of extend on that, um, add all of the data types together and actually start coming up with... Uh, a bit of a system as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into that without further ado. I'm I'm, I'm going to try and make these episodes a lot a lot snappier because I kind of do want to get this over and done with so we can get back to multiplayer and game programming and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go because obviously I want to be able to explain all of this stuff and I want you guys to understand exactly what's going on. So uh, so far we've got a way to write bytes, shorts, ints, and longs. So these are basically the four types of integer that we have, right? The four integer, integer types that we have in uh, in Java. You could also say that char is an integer type and you could kind of deal with that, but byte is kind of, uh, I think, uh, actually, I'm pretty sure, I'm not even 100% sure, I think a char in, uh, in Java is actually two bytes, if I'm correct. I'm pretty sure I'm right. And it's unsigned, I think, isn't it? So char a equals, let's just try like 500. Yeah. 5,000, so let's try like 40,000. See, that's okay. So I'm guessing 6553, five, five, five is the last value and six would give us an error. Yeah, so looks like a char acts like an unsigned short, okay, uh, which is quite nice. So I don't know if we will bother doing that. We might, uh, you know what, let's do it just because it's going to be exactly the same. So if we wanted to have a char value, uh, we would simply, uh, well, that's it actually, we're just, done straight away. Okay, so it's very simple to do. You could probably just kind of deal with this as well, but it's probably better to make it make the um, make a separate method for that. So there we go. So we've got basically all of the integer types implemented here. Okay, byte, short, char, int, and long. Okay. Now, the other big problem that we have is dealing with decimal types, because a lot of people get really confused for some reason with those. Okay, so decimal types being float and double, those are the two that we have available to us in Java. Okay, and then there's also other types that we have to deal with, such as Boolean um, and strings as well, which is another big one, uh, which we will also cover. But essentially, um, the easy way and the way that you should probably write bytes uh, in um, uh, in terms of if they're floats or doubles, is actually just basically kind of read the data that makes them up, obviously, and then handle them like an integer. So luckily for us, let's just write uh, the prototype here. So public static void write bytes, we've got the byte destination, we've got the pointer, and of course we've got the actual value. So the good thing uh, that exists here in Java is actually in the float class, there is a function called uh, to, uh, float to int bits. Okay, so it's an interesting function. It takes the float as the value, right? And essentially what it spits out to us is, let me just see if I can attach the source code so we can take a look at what it actually does. Um, so where were we? Okay, so uh, you can see that, uh, unfortunately it's gonna be a native, yeah. Um, but essentially what it does, and again, it's, it's really is a, it is a bit of a native operation because it has to actually read the memory and see what that returns. But uh, you can see that essentially what it does is it takes in a float um, and it spits out an integer, which just kind of is the bytes that make up that float. So we know that a float is four bytes, which means that it's essentially eight hexadecimal digits, right? Um, and that number, whatever that is, which represents that float, it will spit out back to us as an integer. Okay, of course, a float in memory still looks like, say, an integer in memory. It's just structured a little bit differently. But what I mean is it's still like just four bytes of data, essentially. And if, if, if we want to get those four bytes of data, we can do something like float to int bits, which is just really simple, really easy to do. So um, once we do have that, and I'll just call this like data, right? Uh, it'd be interesting to actually see what that data looked like. Again, it's just probably going to look like a very high number. So if we do something like... Um, Let's see, if I just literally call write bytes, uh, we don't even need destination pointer, whatever, but we put something like 1.1f or something in here, then you can see that we get this number, which is just some random kind of high looking number, okay? But what you need to realize is that is simply the representation of a float um, in memory, okay? And that's all we need, because if we want to recreate it, 
we can essentially do the opposite of the uh, thing. So if we take this number, in fact, I'm just going to demonstrate this real quick. If we take this number real quick, and we'll, we'll see what the opposite of this is. So I'm guessing that there's, um, let's see, where is the, so there's also int value, which you can do if you've got the float. I guess we could have done that as well. Um, but there's also int bits to float, of course, right? And that's actually the native version of it, but I'm sure there's, uh, yeah, in fact, that that's it, right? So what you can do uh, to recreate this is, of course, if I did something like system out of print line, uh, new, uh, sorry, float dot int bits to float, and I paste it in that number, and I printed that number, of course, and I'll even add like a little float over here, uh, you can see that we would get 1.1. Okay, there we go. So that's how it works. Very simple. I just wanted to make sure that I was pretty thorough there with my uh, explanation so that you guys understand what I'm doing. And then of course, it's just an integer. So what we could do is simply return uh, write bytes, destination being dest, pointer being pointer, um, and then value of course being data in this case. Okay, and we could just do something as simple as that and that would work out great. So I don't know why I made this uh, a void method. Let's just make it an, an int method. But there we go, okay? So we can do something as simple as that and that will work nicely for us. Uh, double, as you can imagine, is going to be the exact same thing except with a double. So if I just grab double value here um, and I do something like double dot, I'm guessing it's just gonna be double two int bits, except it's probably gonna be two long bits because obviously it needs to take up eight bytes. So I'm just gonna guess, yep, okay, that was a lucky guess. Um, obviously this needs to return, uh, sorry, obviously this, yeah, this will just work actually because of course we've got a long version for that prototype, but there we go, okay? Very simple stuff, again, that double will do the exact same thing as, it'll work the same way as the float does. Uh, so that's done, all right? Now the final primitive type that we've got, I believe, if I haven't missed anything, I don't think I have, is of course the boolean. Um, so we'll have write bytes, byte destination, int pointer, double value. Now this is a bit of a, this is a bit of an issue because we need to think about how we actually want to, sorry, not double value, I'm uh, saying stuff that's incorrect. Um, well, we've got this issue here where a boolean is essentially one byte, okay? There's no reason for us to ever take up more than one byte. Um, a boolean is typically represented as one byte in memory. Now, you might be thinking to yourselves, why is that the case if really it just takes up one bit, right? It's gonna be either zero or one that can be represented by one bit. And of course it can, but the issue is that memory can only be addressed uh, by bytes, right? You can't address memory by bits. Bytes is the lowest level of memory addressing that you can get to, okay? So uh, we can't have we can't say fit eight bits. We can't just address eight bits into a byte, if that makes sense. So you can't be like, um, when when we actually go and like say say that we make a variable called a or whatever, and just say that somewhere in memory. If we try to get to that, I don't know why I said it was five, but let's just say it's false. If we try and get to that, it can't be like bit number one point five or something. It has to be like a whole byte, right? Or byte number one point five, right? It has to be a whole byte. We can't address. Uh, memory uh, more finely, essentially, uh, than bytes. That's why they take up one byte. So essentially it's one bit with seven bits of just padding, which is just gonna be zero, right? Um, or even garbage, doesn't really matter. Um, but the idea is that's how it works. Of course you can yourself encode um, eight booleans into a single byte easily, right? All you have to do is basically make a bit field um, which is just essentially being like, oh, hey, you know, if I, I, I can fit, let's just say I've got my, you know, bit field here and it's equal to zero. I can be like, if I had a bunch of booleans, um, in fact, let's do this experiment now. Why not? We're learning about this fun stuff here. So we'll continue on and, uh, and do something cool. So I'll clear all this stuff. So if we've got a bunch of booleans, let's just say we've got an array of booleans, um, eight of them, uh, and then we'll just literally go through them and we'll maybe set them all to random values. So AI equals new random. I know this is obviously not the best way to do it, but I'm just writing code. No one cares, okay. Um, don't need to instantiate random every time. It doesn't matter, it's fine, it's okay. It's just a demonstration. Uh, so 
And now that we've got eight random booleans, we can actually put them into this single bit field pretty easily, okay? What we can do is we can actually go through all eight booleans here. Whoops. Um, I plus eight, I plus plus. And then we can simply say that the bit field is going to or equal uh, one shifted uh, left, or oh, sorry, not one, it will be, uh, what is it? A, I shifted left by uh, the amount of spaces that we're up to, which is I, okay? And if we do something like that, it'll actually encode it for us. Uh, now, uh, why why is this complaining? Let's just quickly see. Oh, because it's a boolean. Okay, well, we can cast it to an int first. How's that? What? Oh, this is awful. All right, so if it's true, we'll say one. If it's false, we'll say zero. This is rubbish. All right, there we go. So we can do something like this. Uh, so let me quickly just print um, let me quickly just print that, for example, and we'll have something like, um, the reason I'm showing you this, by the way, is something is, well, A, because it's useful knowledge, but also B, because we might actually use something like this if we wanted to store arrays of booleans, for example, because uh, it's obviously a lot more efficient. Instead of taking eight bytes, it takes one byte, which is eight times smaller, which is fantastic. Uh, anyway, we'll print this first, and then at the end, we will, uh, do we have a way to print... So we can print it in hexadecimal. Um, there's a way in Java uh, to binary string. There's a way in Java, let me just Google this real quick, um, to actually convert uh, an integer into a binary string. So integer to binary string is actually what it is. Uh, so then we'll also print integer dot to binary string, uh, and then integer will be bit, bit field. All right, cool, there we go. So if we run this real quick, what you'll see is that uh, if we start here at the beginning, uh, we have true, 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 which are these four bits, f two falses, false, false, and then two trues again. And if I keep running this or whatever, uh, okay, so this one's actually one true followed by like uh, seven leading zeros, right? And anyway, you, you can kind of see how that works, false, 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 and you can encode that. And of course, you can do the opposite to uh, extract the values back. Um, so it's really, really simple to do something like this. Um, it's used a lot in, you know, data formats and whatnot. It's a good way to kind of encode your booleans into a single uh, four byte. Okay, so this integer is actually, I just realized, four bytes. But if we just, we can just change that to a byte and it will obviously work the same way. Uh, there you go. Let me just, um, I don't know if there's a byte dot to binary string, which is unfortunate. Anyway, uh, you can just get rid of like the first few. <laughs> but you kind of get the point, right? This will all fit into, into a single byte. So there we go. We've learned about that. That's cool. Fun stuff. Um, we're not going to bother with that for now, especially because this is supposed to be a very simple uh, kind of sterilization uh, format. I just wanted to show you that so that you could implement that yourselves kind of for homework or if you just wanted to uh, give it a shot or do it in your own format, uh, that you can definitely do something like that. But um, essentially for booleans, all we'll do is, again, it's just really, really simple. We'll just do something like uh, destination pointer plus plus equals value one uh, or zero. So if value is true, we'll set that to one. Otherwise we'll set it to zero. Okay, simple as that. Uh, now, why is this complaining? Destination is a byte. Yeah, why is this complaining? Can't convert from int to byte. Well, what if I stick a B there? Does that work? Apparently not. All right, well, that's always fun. I guess we're casting it to a byte. All right, there we go, done. So, and then we can obviously return pointer. Okay, and then there we have our boolean. Uh, obviously it's a bit of a waste because it's gonna, you know, leave the rest of the seven bits just doing nothing, but it works uh, and it will continue working <laughs> uh, for as long as we need it. So let's just set that to true and this one to false. And then we can uh, obviously print them and see what we get. So that's actually gonna, I just realized, crash. Uh, let's go back and not write this long twice. Let's try it once. Uh, and then, uh, where are we? So these, did we write a long there? That does not look like, how much space? 16, hmm, this is suspicious. That's very suspicious. Let's just get rid of this for, for, for the minute here. That's because it's, wait, no, that's fine. Let's see what this gives us. 
Okay, we got one and zero. Okay, obviously we made it 16, so that's why it's got so much padding. I'm not sure what I was reading there though, because that just looked weird to me. Let me quickly uh, bring that back here. So we were doing the number, which was the minimum value, whatever. Uh, so we do that first then. So that's like, but I just don't see the one anymore. Oh, well, that would be why. Let's do something like, uh, you know, some random number instead. All right. So there's the one. And then there's a zero and I assume because this is the first eight bytes, right? There's our one, the true, there's our false zero. And then the rest of them are just all set to zero because it's just the remainder of the bytes. Okay, pretty cool stuff. So that's how that works. Very, very simple. Um, if you guys have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed my videos, then you can support me on patreon.com forward slash the channel. If you do so, you will, uh, you can pick up some pretty cool rewards, such as getting access to all the game for growing code via a private GitHub repository. Um, but even if you do pledge a little bit of money, then obviously that helps me put out the videos more often, uh, and generally just supports the series and what I do. So, uh, the other thing that's pretty awesome is of course the Cherno Slack chat. So you can head over to slack.channel.com, sign up, um, and essentially you'll get added to a kind of instant messaging kind of community where you can talk about people uh, about various things, uh, including, of course, what we just covered in this video. If you need any more help and whatnot, that's a great place to get it. And it's kind of all real-time messaging. So people will, will reply to you instantly. I have it like on my phone. So if you guys are talking about something interesting, I, I tend to chime in pretty often. And it's just a really good community. Um, it's a really good place to be because I don't really put out videos as often as I would like. Um, and so because of that, kind of when there's this kind of radio silence and I'm not putting out videos, you can always kind of go on that chat, ask me uh, what's up and maybe have, if you guys have any questions, you can ask me there. And it's just a really, it's just a really nice place to, um, to hang out in between the videos, right? During the intermission. Uh, but anyway, that is pretty much how the cookie crumbles. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and I'll see you guys next time. So next time we're actually going to, so we've written pretty much everything we have to write. Okay. I think next time we'll talk about how we can write out strings because they're the only kind of type that we don't write out. You guys might not realize it, but what we've got here, this kind of write bytes with pretty much every uh, data type there is, right? This is actually basically all the data we need. Okay. We're missing two kind of things, but they're not primitives, right? We've covered every single primitive data type. We're missing strings, which of course aren't primitive. Strings are essentially just arrays of characters, right? But then we're also missing just arrays in general. So what if we wanted to write out like, I don't know, 10 uh, integers, right? How do we do that? Of course, we could simply uh, call this method 10 times with all of our different values. But again, that doesn't particularly group them into an array. Um, we need a way to basically write a header into that array being like, Hey, this is how long the array is, for example. Okay. But that's more to do with our actual data structure, um, that we choose for our file format. And we'll definitely talk about that more next time, but we're going to cover strings next time because we'll have kind of a standard format for writing out strings, which should be pretty awesome. So anyway, have fun, do this, ask any questions, uh, in the comments and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.